Hi guys, it's Jamila here from Slap. Today I'm going to be doing a video on all of the powder bronzers in my collection. I have done a video reviewing all of my cream bronzers, so I will link that down below. But if you haven't subscribed already, guys, please subscribe. We'd love to have you in the Slap family. And without further ado, guys, here is the video. So first up is one I mentioned in my video the other day is the NARS Summer Unrated, upside down, the NARS Summer Unrated Powder Bronzer Duo. This is a powder bronzer duo and it comes with a blush as well. I really like the bronzer of this. It's got a really nice brown, a brown undertone but with a nice hint of warmth to it. It's a really nice unique shade. I love the fact that it comes in a duo and I love the fact that it comes with a very intense outlandish blush as well that actually looks really really flattering so one of my favorite bronzers and a new product that is limited edition for this summer so do get it if you can next up is one of the bronzers i like to use if i'm feeling demure if i don't want a bronzer that's too showy if i want something quite chill and sophisticated and very no makeup makeup this is the patrick Tarte bronzer in the shade she's chiseled It is quite a light bronzer and unfortunately it doesn't, it's not really rich enough for all richer skin tones but it does work just about for me and I do like it, I like it when I just want a little bit of bronze but really not too much colour and really not too much like redness or neutralness as well. My favourite thing about this is the actual cream contour that comes with it up here uh, but it is a nice bronzer and it is one of my favourites when I'm looking for something chill and shit. Next up is the Victoria Beckham Beauty Bronzer. to wait a long time for this to come out in the shade 05 but it was definitely worth the wait this comes with two shades so it comes with a lighter more regular undertoned brown and then it comes with a rosier brown as well they're really nice worn alone if i want something a bit more chill i'll just use this one if i want something a bit rosy i'll just use this one but they're also really nice together and i tend to use them together most of the time it is also refillable so when this one day runs out i will just buy the refill the packaging on this is absolutely sublime it is a very like heavyweight metal compact case that is really that really harks back to the old school compact cases i really really like this i like the tortoise shell it's very precious and i try not to bring it out with me because i don't want it to break but it is such a nice bronzer i really love the shades of this i love this rosy hue and i love this kind of nice more chilled brown so really, really nice quality bronzer from victoria beckham another one of my favorite bronzers and one that i've rediscovered my love for in the last couple of weeks is the gucci bronzer
This one is very rosy. This is in the shade 05. This one is the richest rosy shade and it really does pack a punch. It is very impactful, very rosy, very warm. It kind of is like a blush of bronze in one, uh, but it's just so nice and I've actually re been really reaching for it a lot. I really, really like this. This does have a scent though and it is quite a soft bronzer. The thing I like about it is the packaging. It's absolutely beautiful. It is very old school glamour. It does have a little brush at the bottom, which I always forget about, but if you are on the move, then it's really nice to have a product with a brush and a mirror. It's also refillable as well, so another sustainable, eco-conscious product. Gorgeous packaging, great product, really nice and rosy, and a pretty decent shade range as well. Next up is one of my clean green bronzers. This is the Ilia Bronzer, the Songbird Night Light Bronzing Powder. This came out a couple of years ago in some richer, deeper shades, and I very appreciate it. It's a really nice, rosy bronzer. It's a really nice shade. My only problem with this is it's such a soft, soft bronzer that it does have a lot of kickback, and it does get a bit spready sometimes, but it is a really nice hue and a really nice color. And when I want something really rosy, but kind of natural and earthy feeling and very soft, I'll tend to go for this. Another rosy bronzer, but the rosy bronzer, a rosy bronzer that's a bit more stiff, a bit more firm, Sunstalker bronzer in Mocha Mami. This one was the first bronzer that came out in all, for all skin tones and really revolutionized the richer, deeper bronzers that were on the market. There weren't very many. I think there was like a Guerlain bronzer and a Bobbi Brown bronzer and they weren't very bronzy and they weren't very catered to deeper skin tones. And as soon as Fenty brought out these, this range of powder bronzers a few years ago, everyone else started thinking that actually people of rich skin tones might actually want bronzers too. So this one really started it off, even though it's not one I reach for very much, I really appreciate what it did. And it is such a nice undertone, such a nice hue. I just think some of my other ones have better formulations like the Victoria, the Gucci and the Nars, but I really, really appreciate what this did for rich deeper skin tones bronzers and bronzers in general it just made bronzers a thing again and i think it is such a great product and an absolute classic next up is the charlotte tilbury airbrush flawless finish bronzer This is one of the bronzers that really got me into bronzers and got me excited about bronzers after the Fenty Beauty one. I love the shell packaging of this. It's so glamorous, so fun. It is also refillable as well, but I don't know if I'll ever get through it. This is the shade number four, and it is actually really great in the sense that it's quite a neutral bronzer, but not too gray, not too cool. It's got a bit of warmth to it as well, which I do appreciate. It's really nice at smoothing out the skin and just looks really good. I tried this on with the cream bronzer in four in my review of the cream bronzer in four, and they work really, really well together. It also works really well with the cream bronzer in three, which is the one I still have, but it works really well on top of cream bronzers, particularly the Charlotte Tilbury ones, but it's such a nice, blurring powder that's not too red not too cool just a great neutralish undertone next up is the benefit hula toasted bronzer Benefit actually had the Hula bronzer out for a very long time, for I think about 10 years, and it only came in one shade. They then decided after the whole Fenty Beauty to bring it out in new shades for more skin tones, and this was the toasted one, which is the deepest, richest one, 
at the time and I actually do really like this and I did really like this when it launched I don't reach for it that much anymore just because it's quite small um, and it's kind of hard to get my brush into and the undertone's nice and neutral good for traveling as well because it is cardboard but still has a mirror as well last up are two more neutral cooler bronzers first up is the Christian Dior Dior Forever Natural Bronze in number 8 deep bronze I love the fact that there are eight shades of this bronzer. I think that's probably the most inclusive bronzer shade range of all of the bronzers I have. I don't think any of them have eight. I don't think even the Fenty has eight. So it's a really good, really good shade range from Dior. And I love the undertone of this, even though it is quite cool and quite neutral. It does work really well because it's quite sheer and it's quite buildable. And it works really well at setting cream, cream bronzers and cream products I have. And it works really well under powder blushes I have as well. So it was such a nice product and really surprised me. I kind of held off buying it for a long time and I don't really know why. But as soon as I bought it, I was like, okay, it seems fine. But I just kept reaching for it and kept reaching for it. And it is a staple of my makeup collection and one thing I definitely couldn't do without. So definitely a favorite for me. It's just kind of like a secret weapon in my makeup arsenal. It's just like hits all the marks every single time. Last but not least is a bronzer that I've, I don't think I've ever used it since I tried it, but this is the Vesca Bronzer, Kissed by Barley Bronzer. I bought this online uh, when it first launched and I definitely got two richer shades. It was such an extensive shade range and actually probably as extensive if not more than the Dior. It's got that natural feel, the same kind of softness that the Ilia has which means it does have a lot of kickback and it is a bit too crumbly for my liking but it is a nice soft bronzer if soft bronzers are your thing. Unfortunately for me I just got the wrong shade and it definitely leans more to the contour side of things and I think if you were a richer deeper skin tone this would still be nice but I think it's just a bit rich for me. So I'm not one I use a lot, but one I have and felt like I should definitely include. So guys, that is it. Those are my bronzers. Those are all of the powder bronzers in my collection. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, guys. Will you be buying any? Will you be trying any? My favourites at the moment are probably the NARS, the Gucci, and the Dior, but I really love most of these bronzers. They're really good, and they all do different things. I probably don't need as many as I have, but there are definitely a few essentials in there. Anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Will you be buying any? Will you be trying any? Do you have any? Which ones do you have? Which ones do you have that I haven't included and I should definitely try, or we should definitely know about? Let me know. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please subscribe. We'd love to have you in the slap family. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you on the next one.